Good morning. Uh, last lecture we looked at how to use a different method, the, what we called as the deflect, displacement method, uh, to solve or analyze a statically indeterminate structure. Now, I'm not going to use the word statically indeterminate anymore, because if you look at uh, the displacement method, uh, there is no computation of static indeterminacy in the entire procedure. In fact, I'll show you later that even a statically determinate structure can be solved using the displacement method. The only point uh, that the displacement method concentrates on is actually the kinematic indeterminacy or the number of degrees of freedom in a structure because the displacements corresponding to these degrees of freedom are what we first find out based on which we complete the analysis of the structure. So now, uh, today I am going to continue uh, looking at how to use the displacement method. Last time I introduced you to the slope deflection equations and uh, we saw how you could use the slope deflection equations to solve a particular problem. Remember that what we did was that we had a problem in which we had a single degree of freedom and we actually wrote down an equilibrium equation corresponding to the degree of freedom and that equilibrium equation actually enabled us to solve for the unknown displacement corresponding to the degree of freedom based on which we could find out the bending moment diagram for that. Now, uh, the slope deflection equations, the way I have written them are uh, not complete. I will explain what I mean by that. Let us look at a particular problem. Uh, let us look at this problem. So, I have a loading here, let us say P, okay. And I want to know what my M A B, what my M B A are. Now, if you look at this particular case, you will agree that given this load, M A B and M B A are going to exist. They cannot be equal to 0. Do you agree to that? Okay. So, now, but let us look at the slope deflection equations. What do the slope deflection equations say? M A B is equal to 4 E I by L theta A B plus 2 E I by L theta B A minus 6 E I by L squared delta B A and M B A is equal to 2 E I by L theta B plus 4 E I by L theta B A minus 6 E I upon L squared delta B A. These are the equations. Okay. Now, if I look at the slope reflection equations, what is theta A B? What is the rotation at this point? Since it is fixed end, this is equal to 0. What is theta B A? Since this is a fixed end, this will be equal to 0. What is the relative movement of this point to this point? These peak points cannot move vertically, so this is equal to 0. So, then what is M A B equal to? According to this equation, M A B is equal to 0. Similarly, you will see that M B A is equal to 0, but this is wrong. Why? Because we can just see that there has to be an M A B and M B A. They cannot be equal to 0. So, therefore, the slope deflection equations that the way that we wrote them are okay as long as you do not have a load on the member. When you lo have loads only on the joints, these kind of equations are okay because remember last time when I solved, where did I apply the load? The load was a moment applied at the center support which was at the joint. It was not on a member, but this kind of load is on a member and when you have a member load, so this is not 
valid when you have loading on member not valid so what do we do how do we solve this problem obviously slope deflection equations still have to be used because they are the fundamental equations um, in displacement method okay so how do we solve this problem well let us look at it and therefore let us look at the problem that i have defined and that is let's look at this let's try to solve this problem in other words the slope deflection equations as we wrote, wrote them are incomplete and i'll show you how incomplete they are okay let's look at this this case there will exist an mab and there will exist an mba now how do i find out this mab and mba okay what are these moments these are actually the moments at the fixed ends so i'll call them as fixed end moment ab and fixed end moment ba okay so these are the moments of the fixed end and if we somehow are able to compute these okay and if we add these to the expressions for slope deflection equations then maybe we should we should will have something so let us try to find out how we can get this fem ab now if you look at normal books you will see that people actually at the back of the book you will always see that given various kinds of loads okay they will give you expressions for this fixed end moments so therefore for example let me just tell you that if you look at any book structural analysis book and you say that you have a load okay uh, at the center let's say l by 2 l by 2 then they will tell you these are given in handbooks this fixed end moment is going to be equal to pl squared by 8 and this is also pl squared by 8 but in the opposite direction it will be in this direction if you note fixed end moment is what force into uh, force into uh, this thing uh, displacement so it's not l squared it's pl upon 8 okay now uh, the the point is uh, you will always see that i will never be able to tell you the formula uh, because i really don't uh, try to remember formula and again uh, as i have said all along that the entire focus of this particular course as i teach it structural analysis is not to give you a whole set of formulae that you are going to have to remember to be able to solve okay uh, for example i give you the slope deflection equations and then i explain to you how to you know how to actually obtain the slope deflection equations from first principles okay and as far as the fixed end moments are concerned i am going to do exactly the same thing i am going to tell you how to compute the fixed end moments given a load so that you never have to remember a whole bunch of formulae of course once you once if you are just doing an analysis it always helps but when you are actually learning a course learning a whole lot of formulae does not i think in my opinion help you in understanding how to solve problems okay so therefore i am going to again go back and explain to you how to compute the fixed end moments so that given any loading which is you know you might have a loading which may not be there in any handbook okay uh, how will you get the fixed end moments i'm going to spend the whole day of today explaining to you how to obtain fixed end moments and then i will show you how to apply this entire procedure 
for a given uh, structure. Okay? So let us look at this. Let us look at this situation and I am going to go back to the original that I have a uniform beam. So its length is L and E i is a flexural rigidity at any cross section. Okay? So it is a uniform beam and this beam let us look at a particular example. I am using only as an example okay, you will see that my procedure can be used for anything and this load is applied at the mid span. Okay? And our entire goal over here is to find out the fixed end moment at A and the fixed end moment at B. How will we solve this procedure? Okay, how will we solve, get these? The procedure is very simple. I always go principle of superposition. So, I am going to say that look, I am going to take this structure. Okay? So, I am going to say that this structure is equal to this plus See what I have done over here is I have taken this structure which is a fixed fixed beam. I have made it into a simply supported beam and I have said that in a simply supported beam you know that the bending moment here and the bending moment over here are 0. Okay? So, what I have taken is that look this structure I have put made these fixed end moments as external loads and I have said that look this entire thing is equal to this plus this, but that is not good enough okay? because we know this we do not know these, we have to find these. What else has to be satisfied? Note that under this load what is going to happen? This is going to become something like you know this, the rotation, I am just drawing the rotation for this. The rotation will be, the deflection pattern will be something like this. What will be the deflection pattern for this? something like this. What do the deflection patterns have to satisfy? Note that one, one difference between this plus this is the fact that not only as the loading has to be taken, but note that, note that the displacement here and the displacements here are 0. The displacement here and here are 0 because you know actual rigidity. So, this point is not going to go. So, displacements are 0 at this point. What additional thing is 0 over here which is not 0 here? The rotations. So, therefore, what we have to say is that we are going to compute theta a b under the loading. Okay? Note that the way I have shown it, it is uh, negative, you know, because my positive is always anti clockwise. And this is theta b a 0. Now, what we are going to do is get these theta b a under the moments and one additional factor that this has to satisfy is that theta a b 0 plus theta a b due to the fixed end moment is equal to 0. Theta b a 0 plus theta B A due to the moment is equal to 0. So, therefore, you see you have this compatibility that you have to satisfy that the moment at this point is equal to 0. Okay? So, you see what I am trying to find out? I am trying to actually find out the fixed end moment using the force method. Okay? It is very interesting that I am using the force method to solve because if you look at this, how many uh, uh, this thing uh, redundant uh, forces do you have in this particular case? These two. So, since you have these two as the redundant forces, 
I am actually writing down equations, compatibility equations corresponding to this. So, I am you to find out the fixed end moments which I am going to use in the displacement method, okay, I am actually using the force method to compute these fixed end moments, okay. So, let us, let me just go through these steps for this particular one, so that I, I can explain to you how to do this for a general type of loading, okay. So, let us see what is the rotation. So, therefore, the, the goal here first is under the loading to find out the rotations at the two ends. So, let us apply the load. How do I find out the rotations? Well, find out the rotation. Under this load, what would be the bending moment diagram which will look like? Again, I am not going to spend time com telling you how to compute bending moment diagram. By now, you should know this. It is going to be this way and this bending moment is this way. Okay? This is the bending moment. I leave it up to you how to obtain it. You should by now for a statically determined structure, you should be able to draw a bending moment diagram, shear force diagram and any other diagrams that you have to draw. Okay? So, so this is my bending moment diagram. Okay. And since E i is a constant, this m upon E i diagram is going to be equal to P l upon 4 E i. Simple. Okay. Now, I want to find the rotation here. What would, what would I do? Well, principle of virtual force, right? Apply a unit force here. If I apply a unit force here, what's the bending moment diagram? Unit. And find finding out this bending moment over here, what do I need to do? Well, let me first do this. Okay? So, this is the bending moment. So, in t uh, what would theta A B equal to? 1 into theta A B is equal to the internal virtual work, which is m m upon e i d x, which I am going to do area under these two curves. Note that I have to take two curves actually, okay. Although explicitly you will see that you will say that, oh, I can take this entire thing and find out the area under this curve and draw its centroid, okay, I know where the centroid is. But note that these integrals are always valid only where, so in this particular case, actually this integral, since this expression from here to here is different from the expression from here to here, actually you have to take two integrals. And for each integral, you need to find out its area under the curve. And so therefore, this one is going to be equal to P L upon 4 E i, length is L by 2. So, L by 2 by 2, so that is L by 4. So, this is the area under this curve. Okay? And where is its um, neutral axis? You will see that, uh, sorry, its centroid, it will be at one third from here, two third from here. So, two third of L by 2 is, two third of L by 2 is L by 3. So, that means at L by 3, what is the corresponding? value, you will see that it will be equal to 2 by 3. Note the fact that this is sagging and this is hogging, so it is actually minus because the sum total is minus. Similarly, if I take this side, you are going to have, so this is one part, then let me add the next part. The next part again will be P L upon 4 E i multiplied by L by 4 and this is acting at this point which is 1 by 3. So, if you look at the 1 by 3, it is going to be 1 by 3. So, if you add the two of them up, you will see that this will be equal to minus, so therefore, theta a b due to the loading is equal to minus p l squared upon 16 e i. Let us look at the consistency of units. P is in terms of Newton, Newton L squared, so it is Newton meter squared. What are the units of E? E is Newton per meter squared. I 
is meter fourth. So if your Newton per meter squared into meter fourth is Newton meter squared, this is Newton meter squared divided by Newton meter squared, it's dimensionless. And what are what's the units of theta? You will see that it's in radians, which is dimensionless. Okay? So this is consistent. So this is my theta A B zero. Let us do find out theta B A under the same loading. So under the same loading this is acting at L by 2, same M by E I diagram. I'm not going to, I'm just drawing it all over again just so that for E I, this is my M by E I diagram. And now I want to find out this is A, this is B, this is C, A, C, B. And now I want to find out theta B A. So theta B A, what do I do? I apply a unit force corresponding to the theta, which is a unit moment, and then find out the bending moment diagram. And the bending moment diagram over here is going to be 1. So this is my small m diagram. And therefore, 1 into theta B A 0, that's the external virtual work, okay, theta B A 0 is going to be equal to the area under this curve. And I'm not going to go through, I've already gone through the steps for the last time. I'm just going to write down L by 4. So if I take this, it's going to be 1 by 3. And note that both of them are plus. So this is going to be plus because both of them are the same sign. Plus PL upon 4 EI into L by 4. That is this part is going to be 2 by 3. And therefore, theta BA 0 is going to be plus PL squared upon 16 EI. What does that mean? That under this loading, the displacement pattern is this way. Note that this one is equal to PL squared upon 16 EI. This one is equal to PL squared upon 16 EI. Note that this is minus, which means clockwise. This is plus which means anti-clockwise, everything works out perfectly. And since the loading is, uh, loading is symmetrical, even the displacement pattern will be symmetrical. Okay? So we have found out theta AB and theta BA0. Now we need to find out what are going to be theta AB and theta BA due to the fixed end moments. So in other words, I am going to put M1, let me just put M1 and M2, okay, M1 and M2. So if I pl plug that in, what do I get? Let me apply them separately, huh? because anyway I can do superposition. So I'm going to take this plus this. Is that okay? It's the same thing, right? Two loads acting. I'm just considering them as two separate loads. Okay? So I can find out the theta AB due to this moment, find out the theta AB due to this, and sum up them up. Okay? Under this loading, what kind of moment diagram do I have? I have M and this one is going to be this way, okay, uh, and it's linear, okay, my things look really bad. And how do I find out uh, theta uh, AB? Apply a unit moment here and for finding out theta BA, apply our unit moment here. For this, 
the bending moment diagram is this way, 1 into, and for this, it's, for this, the bending moment diagram is M2. Okay, so I have drawn all the bending moment diagrams. Why? Because these are the real loads. So I'll finding out this gives me the curvature diagram and these are the virtual moments. So, I am going to find out due to this and add and due to this and add it. Okay? So, if you look at it theta a b m due to this is what area under this curve and then the value of this at its centroid. So, what is the area under this curve? m 1 upon e i multiplied by L by 2 and it is at two thirds the distance from this point. So, that value is going to be two third, two third. Okay? So, if you look at this and uh, look both of them are hogging. So, this is plus. So, this is the moment due to this load sorry the theta a b at this point due to this load. Now, I am going to add the theta a b at this point due to this load. So, for that this is the real curvature and this is the uh, virtual. So, if you look at this what is the area under this curve? It is going to be equal to m 2 upon e i multiplied by L by 2 multiplied by look this is sagging this is hogging. So, it is going to be minus at 2 third you will see that the at the c g the m 1 value is equal to 1 minus 1 third. So, this is my theta a b. Similarly, theta b a for theta b a this is the virtual and these are the two reals. So, for this one uh, the area under this curve m 1 upon e i into l upon 2 multiplied by at this point you will see and this is sagging this is hogging. So, it is minus 1 over 3 plus m 2 upon e i that is due to this loading where this is the real curvature and that area under the curvature diagram is going to be this and since these are both sagging this is going to be plus 2 by 3. So, if I put these down I am going to just put all of them together and you will see that I get Now, note that what is the big deal of about this? I already know this, do not I? I already know this. Remember, we computed it last time L upon 3 i, L upon 6 c i, L upon 6 c i. I have already done this. I, I use this to obtain the slope deflection equation. So, I have done this already and I have got the same thing. Okay? Now, the only point here to note is and what is theta a b uh, 0? Let me write that down. Theta a b 0, I have already computed it, is equal to p l squared upon 16 e i and theta b a 0 is equal to p l squared upon 16 e i. The only thing is that if m 1 and m 2 are the fixed end moments, then theta a b 0 plus theta m. So, now I need to find out those fixed end moments, right? So, what I am going to do is I am going to put this plus this equal to 0 
Okay, and and therefore you will see that ultimately, if I say that I am not going to explicitly put them equal to zero, I am going to show you what we are going to be doing. So what we are going to say is that look, this implies that due to the fixed end moments, this is equal to minus AB. In fact, this is what I am going to do. I am going to say that theta AB or BA, I am just writing now, is equal to minus of theta AB due to loading. Okay? Once I say that and I substitute that in, what do I get? I get that for fixed 10 moments, and I'm going to put down fixed 10 moment A, B, L upon 3 E, I minus fixed 10 moment B, A, L upon 6 E, I. is equal to minus theta a b 0 because theta a b m is equal to minus and so fixed end moment at a b l upon 6 e i plus fixed end moment b a upon 3 e i is equal to minus this is by definition, okay? Because this plus this is equal to zero for fixed end moments, okay? Now, okay, if I rewrite this, look at what comes up. This basically becomes L upon three e i minus L upon six e i minus L upon six e i. L upon 3 E i into fixed end moment, fixed end moment B a is equal to minus of theta a b 0 minus theta b a 0, minus of theta a b and theta b a 0. So, the, can I find out the fixed end moment? Sure, take inverse of this, but note what the inverse is. Okay, you have already done this. So, you will see that fixed end moment A B and fixed end moment at B A is going to be equal to what? You will see that it is going to be equal to 4 E i by L. We have already done this. This, when did we use this to develop the slope deflection equations? Okay, so if you look at this, this becomes equal to minus here because it's minus theta a b zero, theta b a zero, and if you look at this, this is equal to fixed end moment a b is equal to four e i by l minus theta a b 0 plus 2 e i upon L minus theta a b 0 and similarly fixed end moment at B a is equal to 2 e i by L theta a b 0 plus 4 e i by L theta b a 0. So, once I have described this, does not this remind you of something? This is actually the uh, you know slope deflection equations that we have already developed last time. Okay? And uh, so therefore, the only thing that you do is to find out the moment, fixed end moments, you just compute the theta a b and theta b a due to the loading and take the negative of that, substitute that in the slope deflection equations and gives you the fixed end moment. Okay? So, now if I do that, let us see for this particular case what? 
we've got for the for this case p at l by 2 what is the fixed end moment the fixed end moments what were theta a b 0 theta b a 0 we've already computed this p l squared upon 16 e i okay so i'm going to plug those in to my slope deflection equations and what do i get fixed end moment at a b is equal to let's see ah uh, by the way sorry let's go back uh, let me just whenever i rush i get into trouble uh, theta a b was negative let's go back theta a b was negative of p l squared upon 16 e i and theta b a was plus p l so let's put that in please uh, so if we go back there we actually see that theta a b is minus of theta b a which is minus okay those are the values so i'm going to plug in uh, the values of uh, the fixed end moment into the so i'll have 4 e i upon l that's the slope deflection equations negative of a b 0 negative of a b 0 is since a b 0 is minus so it's going to be negative it's going to be plus so plus okay then plus 2 e i upon l what is negative of theta b 0 it's minus so i'm going to put minus 16 e i okay and fixed end moment at b a is equal to 2 e i upon l and again minus of this is p l squared upon 16 e i plus 4 e i upon l minus p l squared upon 16 e i and if you do this you will get this 4 4 e i e i cancels e i e i cancels e i e i cancels 4 goes into this 4 times this goes into it 8 times so if you look at this l takes away this squared this l takes away this so you have p l upon 4 minus p l upon 8 which is equal to p l upon 8 and if you look at fixed end moment b a you will see that again e i e i cancels l cancels this 2 cancels this my this cancels this cancels this e i e i cancel so you have p upon 8 minus p upon 4 so my it becomes minus p l upon 8 so therefore what does that mean fixed end moment positive pl upon 8 is positive is anti clockwise and minus is clockwise so under this load pl upon 8 pl upon 8 we've obtained this from first principles now i'm going to quickly go ahead and look at some other kind of loads so that you can convince yourself that all the fixed end moments that you have in handbooks okay you can compute using this method only thing what are the steps in this method i'm going to write down the steps first take the simply supported and obtain theta a b and theta b a due to the loading then two the fixed end moments get fixed end moments this is not this is fixed end moments this is my notation okay so then get fixed end moments by substituting minus theta a b 0 and minus theta v a 0 into slope deflection equations. Okay, so let us just see. 
So let me again take this. Let me take this case. W kilonewton per meter length L EI. What are the fixed end moments? Well, take simply supported and take UDL with W. What's my bending moment diagram look like? My bending moment diagram is a parabola where this is equal to WL squared upon 8. So my curvature diagram is going to be M by EI diagram is going to be WL squared 8 upon EI. So therefore, how do I find out theta AB0? Put a moment at this point. So this is sagging moment. This one if I put is hogging moment. And for this moment, apply a moment there. one, this is my m1, this is my m2 and therefore theta ab0 is equal to area under this curve. What is it that equal to? It is equal to two-third wl squared upon 8 ei into l. That's the area under this curve. Where is its centroid? Centroid is in the center. So for this, it's going to be equal to the sagging. This is hogging. So centroid value will be minus half. That's going to be equal to subtract, subtract. It's going to be WL cubed minus upon 24 EI. And similarly, when you do theta BA equal to zero, you will get plus WL squared upon 24 EI. So take the negative of these and substitute into the slope reflection equations and what do you get? Fixed end moment at AB is equal to 4 EI by L into negative of minus omega thing becomes WL squared upon 24 EI uh, plus 2 EI upon L and theta BA is plus, so negative of that is minus WL cubed upon 24 EI. If you look at this, this will become LL will make it WL squared, EI EI cancels 6 is going to be minus WL cubed by this. So if you put it together, you will see that this turns out to be WL squared upon 8. Similarly, when you find out the fixed end moment at BA, you will find it is equal to WL squared by 8. What does that mean? That means that under this loading, FEM over here is going to be WL squared by 8, and this is going to be clockwise WL squared upon 8. Check, you will see that this is indeed what is given in the handbook. Let me finally do one more problem and convince you that I have not constructed this to make life complicated for you. It is just that any loading you can always find out, take, take, put that same loading, put it on the simply supported beam, find out the rotations of the two ends and put the negative of the two rotations into the slope deflection equations and you will get your fixed end moments. Okay? I am going to do a final one before I show you how this is going to get used. P and this one I am going to say is applied at A and B from the right end where the total length is L and EI. Okay? So in this case again I'm not going to just go through the steps very quickly because we've already spent a lot of time on this. Okay? Note 
that if you draw this, you will see the bending moment diagram looks like this. So this is my bending moment diagram and LAI is going to be equal to the M by EI diagram. Again, for theta AB, this is my virtual moment diagram and for theta BA, this is my virtual moment diagram and therefore now these are two different so let me find this out the area under this curve so area under this curve and then I'll find an area under this curve and add so if you look at it uh, theta 1 into theta AB 0 is equal to so the area under the left hand curve is going to be equal to P A B upon L E I multiplied by A by 2. This is the area under this curve multiplied by the at its centroid. What will be the centroid? The centroid, if you note, look at it, is going to be 2 third A from this side. Okay? 2 third A. Or conversely, I can say that it is equal to L minus 2 by 3A from this side. So what will be the value at this point? You will see that this is going to be equal to L minus A by 3. So I'm going to put that down. So it's going to be equal to L minus A, sorry, 2A by 3, the entire thing divided by L. And note that since this is hogging, this is going to be minus on the outside. And then the area under the other curve is going to be equal to, uh, this is going to be B by 2. B by 2. So this is the area under this curve. And what is it at? At 2 third B from this end. So the value of this is going to be equal to, again, minus outside, 2 third B upon L. Okay, because it's 1 at L, so this is going to be 2 third B upon L. So this is theta AB. Let me put these things down properly. L upon L is 1. So it's going to be 1 minus uh, 2 third, 2A upon 3L. So I'm going to make this P A squared B upon 2EI. And inside it's going to be equal to 1 minus 2A upon 3L. And plus P A B squared L upon E I uh, multiplied by minus 2 B upon 3 L. This is theta A B and similarly you will see that theta B A is equal to just the same and just the opposite uh, way. It's going to be P A B squared L upon E I. The only difference that you will have over here is that, uh, excuse me over here, all of them are minus. So this is going to be minus and plus. I'm taking the minus inside. Hmm? So it's going to be minus and plus. So in this case, this is going to be uh, positive because both, uh, if you look at it, both of them are sagging. Okay, so it's positive. So you'll have PAB squared into 
L upon EI and on this side it's going to be 1 minus 2B upon 3L and then you're going to have PA squared B upon LEI multiplied by 2A by 3L. Very complex equations, but simple uh, to actually go through. Okay? So, now I have to su substitute the negative of these into the moment equation. So, if I plug that in, what do I get? I will just do it for MAB uh, and, uh, and then MBA I can just put it at equal to. So, the fixed end moment is equal to uh, if you plug it in 4 EI upon L into minus of theta AB. So, it is going to be uh, P A B squared upon 2 EI and minus here you will see is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 A upon 3 L plus P A B squared upon L E I okay into minus of that becomes plus so this is going to be 2 B upon 3 L and plus 2 E I upon L of minus of that so this is going to be P a squared B L upon E I into minus of 2 A upon 3 L. Okay. Then I have plus P uh, A B squared upon L E I and that is going to be equal to 2B upon 3L minus 1. Okay. So, now I am going to substitute all of these in and write it out throughout explicitly and then what I get is I am going to take PAB outside. Okay. Just for the sake of completeness, I am going to take PAB outside. So, I get P A B upon L. Note E I E I cancels out, so I am not going to keep. So, this is going to be A B upon L. So, inside what do I get? 4. Note that I have taken L squared outside, L and L outside. Okay. So, I get just 4 into A. So, I get 4 A and then minus 8 a squared upon 3 L then plus here I get 4 into 2 B. So, it is going to be plus 8 and then A B has got B comes out. So, it is going to be 8 B squared upon 3 L that I get from these two terms and then I am going to find out from these two terms. P A B I have taken out. So, I have A here and 2. So, this is going to be equal to minus 4 sorry minus 4 A squared upon 3 L 2 into 2 4 A and on this side I am going to get plus 2 into 2 4 and then A B goes out. So, it is B squared upon 3 L and then minus let us see what I get over here. I get B. So, 2 B. So, minus 2 B. So, here if I take P upon L squared, you will see that this becomes 12 A squared upon 3 L. So, what is that? That is equal to, so I am going to write it down, 4 A minus, okay, 
4 a squared upon L plus B squared. So what I get is I get 4 a squared L minus 4 B squared L. Okay, that you will see. Okay, minus minus you get plus over here. That's what I have done. Minus 2B. Okay, now note that this becomes A plus B by L, okay, 4 times A, B plus L and you can substitute all of those in and ultimately you will see that this turns out to be when you substitute you will get P put A and B, you will get that this is equal to P into A B squared by L squared and this turns out to be P A squared B upon L squared. Now substitute, you want to check A equal to, uh, put A and B L by 2 L by 2 and you will see you will get that you will get P L upon 8 P L upon 8 which is what you get earlier. Okay? So I am going to stop over here.